Hello, welcome to Switched On Gaming, Paul speaking, and today we're looking at a new game that's coming to the Nintendo Switch on the 13th of October. This is the Battle of Polytopia. Uh, as I say, this is out on the 13th, so it should be round about when you're watching this. It's going to dive straight into a game and then we'll come back and have a look at some of the options. Uh, for those of you who aren't aware, this is a port from the PC and mobile version. Lovely bit of music. Um, we'll just leave all those settings as they are for now. This is a uh, 4X strategy game. Uh, if you don't know what 4X is, 4X stands for, see if I get this right, explore, expand, exploit, and exterminate. Basically, if you've played uh, any of the Civilization games, it's probably the closest uh, sort of gameplay-wise you're going to get to this one. Uh, I've really been enjoying it. Now, I must admit, I've only played it for a few hours. And I've got a code reasonably late. So I don't know, you know, deep into the game, how it plays uh, and sort of the longevity and stuff like that. But I just thought I'd give you an overview of the basic game so far. So as I say, it's kind of a 4X game, which means you start with this little base. Uh, if we zoom out, you've got this whole world covered in like a fog of war. Again, very much like civilization. And it's your job to explore the land and exploit its resources and exterminate anything you come across. Uh, whilst you're expanding so as we started off here we, we created a game there's three different game modes we'll go back and have a quick look at those uh, a little bit later in the video but this basically is the basic game mode so we start with one tribe we start with our um, capital city here and then we've got this little blue boundary this is our area so a three by three grid at the moment and uh, we can start to explore from here um, we've got some resources on the tile, so if we pick these uh, apples here, or whatever they are, I think they're apples, uh, they're just fruit, unnamed fruit. If we pick those, then uh, we uh, basically expand our city. So it gives us another population. And then when the bar fills up, we'll, we'll show you the bar in a sec, but when the bar fills up uh, with population, your city expands. And then as you expand your cities, you get these rewards. So if, for the first level leveling up of our city, we can take a plus one star uh, for the workshop, or we can send out an explorer, which is quite exciting and quite useful to do. Basically, send someone off uncovering lots of the map. So let's do that. And they sort of head off in a random direction, uncovering areas of the map. So there you go. And we've got these little, you might have seen a pop up there about tasks. You have these little mini quests to do as well. Um, what I really liked about this game in the few games of it that I've played so far is it's really quick to play. So Civilization, a game can literally last for days or weeks depending on how big you set it up. And, you know, as, as however good Civilization is, and it is a game I really like, and you can get that on the Switch as well, by the way. Um, as I said, it does take a while to play and it is a big commitment. This one, if you see at the top there, you get 30 turns in the sort of standard mode here. There is other modes that let you sort of play infinitely or you know you can you can change those settings basically but in its basic form you pay for 30 turns whoever scores the most uh wins the game. See we've got a score there. There's also a leaderboard and stuff as well. So quite a bit of information coming out here. Let's just slow things back down and, and go back to our capital city here. You see the bar underneath sort of three little broken up bars. Every time we expand our city uh, we grow that bar. You will see um, at the top of the screen where it says stars in the middle there, we've got a plus three next to it. And that means every turn we generate plus three stars and you need those stars basically to do actions. So for example, the picking of the fruit here, if we look at this fruit, it's going to cost us two stars to pick that. We haven't got enough stars to do that action in this turn now. We've only got one star left, so we can't do that this turn so um, we have to basically end our turn by pressing x controls are really well thought out i mean obviously this comes as i say from pc and mobile where sort of a mouse and a touch screen would be quite easy to use you think but also they've really mapped the controllers uh, controller scheme nicely as well so you can see that we ended our turn so we're now on our second turn or turn one of 30 as it's confusingly shown at the top we've now got those plus three stars back into our banks so we've now got four stars to do our actions with uh, so we can pick that fruit if we want. You see these little hearts appear uh, from time to time on the screen. They're basically hints. So I can press the wire button on that there. There's the tip and it just basically gives you a little 
tip if you're stuck of what to do. Uh, finally, we'll go along the bottom before we really dig into some gameplay. Um, we've obviously got settings, not much there. I can turn the music on and off, um, turn some of the hints on and off, but not a massive amount of stuff you can do there. We've got the game stats. This is basically the scoreboard. So at the minute, uh, our tribe, the Imperius, have got 670 points. The unknown tribe that we haven't come across yet, have got 625. And then any tasks that we've got left to do are down here. So let's have a look what we can do on our next turn. We can pick the fruit. And you'll see the bar underneath our city gets filled up by one. Now you can also produce new units here, a bit like um, Civilization. You can produce a new warrior. That's going to cost us two stars to do that. That would finish our turn. That would take the rest of our stars. Um, we can move our little dude here. Now this here is a little village. Now if we move our character onto here, we can sort of sack that city on the next turn and sort of bring it under our control and that's how we expand. So we'll head our warrior off in that direction. Um, we've got some wild animals here. Um, so carrying along the bottom, we, we looked at the game stats. We've also got this tech tree under the plus button. So you can use your stars to basically expand the tech tree so we haven't got really enough to do anything at the moment but as you can see here the costing stars so it's five to go hunting to get the wild animals five to produce a rider six to enable farming and so on and so on and as you obviously like in a skill tree you unlock these it unlocks whatever's linked to that skill tree so that's quite cool and again as you've only got 30 turns you know a game can probably last 20 to 30 minutes max i mean obviously this one we probably won't finish it and as i'm yakking away it will take longer than that but generally if you're playing and you get used to the game you know what you're doing 20 to 30 minutes max um so we've got two stars left what can we do with two stars let's produce a warrior for the next turn and then that'll be the end of our turn we've got no stars left press x and obviously in the background the unknown ai wherever they are on the map are doing their own thing we won't play so we won't play a full game we'll um we'll just play a few rounds so you get the general gist of it and then we'll go back and look at some options um, and talk about some of the other stuff there is multiplayer in this as well which is uh pretty cool so we're going to move you onto the city or the village and then the next turn we'll have that village under our control we've now got our next warrior train so we can sort of head him off in a direction we can't actually pick this fruit yet. If you're wondering why I haven't gone for this fruit yet, you can only uh, interact with stuff in your own boundary. And you see this blue boundary, that's sort of our kingdom. If we click on our city, it, sh it will show you the boundary here. Basically, as we get bigger, you'll see that more clearly because it doesn't really look any different at the moment. But clicking it will show you your boundary. So we can't basically pick these apples yet because they're not part of our kingdom. So we've got three stars left. Have we got anything on the tech tree we can get? No, we probably need to save up something. We're all probably already behind in terms of technical stuff. Let's end the turn, save those stars, and you'll see they'll accumulate. We've got another three, so we've now got six. We will capture this city. Get a load of XP, and you can see here the boundary is now expanded to include a three by three grid around this city as well. So that's cool. Can't really do too much with this dude yet. Don't really want to move him anywhere, there's no point as such. Um, so we've now got a second city, and we can um, produce units from this as well and build it up in the same way as our other city and you can see there a bit clearer the light blue boundary of this city now shows you where that is um we've got six stars we probably want to produce we don't want to end our turn we probably want to produce a rider because they can travel for further distances and again as the maps if it wasn't obvious the maps are randomly generated so each game you play you might have slightly different needs now i feel quite isolated over here so it feels like my first tech should be spent on a rider um, to sort of go exploring so we'll get a rider in the next turn if we try to actually produce him we haven't got enough stars to produce them okay we'll do that next turn so we're out of stars 
we'll end that turn. C turns go pretty quickly. We'll now produce a rider for three stars. And that means we can't do much more. Can't do anything with this wild animal yet. We can't. Oh, we can't go hunting. Oh, no, we can't go hunting until we've got the hunting uh, stuff on the Tetri unlocked. And that's going to cost six stars, which we haven't got yet, so that's fine. But you can see here, by opening up riding, we've also now opened up roads, which you can build between your cities. Helps you travel faster and gives them more sort of prestige and XP. Uh, we've got this free spirit tech unlocked as well. Allows us to build temples and this disband action as well. But as we can't do much more, we'll go on to the next turn. We've now got our rider, so we can send them out. You can see now they can go out a little bit further. When you build roads, you can sort of travel even further. Um, I think an extra square per road, I think. But we can start moving uh, him or her out towards this other little village here and take that under our control. This little fella here is a little bit redundant, but we'll start heading him over that direction to protect the rider. If the rider's going to go exploring over these mountains, then we'll send the warrior with them. I think we'll save our stars for next turn because then we should be able to unlock something juicy on the tech tree. We've now got nine stars. Our rider can't go over the mountains. We might actually be. This map might have actually done us in a little bit here. We might be stuck. Oh, why did I do that? I should have gone to the village. See? You can't undo moves, so it's a bad, bad decision by me to. We'll have to do that next turn. But yeah, I think these mountains might be impassable. So we might have to unlock. See, see what I mean about, you know, it, the map depends on what way, what direction your tech tree will take. You can unlock sailing. So we might have to go that route. Um, so if we go on the tech tree and if we unlock fishing, we'll unlock sailing. But we need to research fishing first and then we can unlock sailing, hopefully on the next turn. But by unlocking fishing, it will now let us get these fish. And they will add population to a little city. Not a massive amount we can do again at the moment. We'll skip the next turn and hopefully, oh, we're not going to have enough to unlock sailing until the next turn. We've only got five stars. But we can get this village. Do that. That's fine. Uh, we can't go anywhere with this rider. There are some smaller mountains that you can actually mine, and you, they are passable, but obviously these big, big old boys are not passable. Uh, so, okay, we'll, we'll save our stars for the next turn. Right, so we captured that city, and now we've got access to all of this fruit, which will grow our city greatly, but it's going to cost two stars to go foraging so we're going to actually make sure we get sailing oh, we can't get sailing yet because that's 10 stars or we could get this climbing research which looks like it lets us travel past the mountains probably best to do that let's do that first and now hopefully here we go, we can get our rider into there. Oh, we are cut off. So we are on a little island. Okay, so we do need sailing. Um, uh, this is awkward because we want to grow our population because then we get more stars each turn. But if we spend these stars going fishing, it's going to be another turn we can't get sailing. Okay. That's fine. Well, I hope you can see it's, uh, you know, kind of these strategic decisions already really early on in the game are already causing us a little bit of a headache. Uh, this metal here in the mountain, these little gold things here, we can uh, unlock mining from the tech tree to be able to grab those. But we haven't got that yet. So we're going to have to basically build up for a couple of turns to unlock sailing. So I don't really want to do too much just now, unfortunately, because we need those stars. So we're just going to have to end our turn. We've really been shafted by getting this little island. 
Uh, da -da -da -da. Right, tech tree. Let's I'm not saving now. We've got 10 stars. So I think to go sailing, all we need to do, I think, is move on to the water. Okay, maybe we actually do need to build a port then. That's going to cost 10 as well. So we're going to end up falling way behind here. Let's have a look at our opponent's doing. I'm still 300 points ahead of them, but feels like we're being hamstrung a little bit. Uh, we need another 10 stars, basically. Okay. There's five of them. Now, again, we can either go foraging to build our city to get stars quicker. Let's try that, actually. So we build up our little village of uh, Rikate or Rikate, it's all uh, random names. Um, we can take a reward. We don't really want an explorer because they can't go anywhere. We'll take the workshop, which gives us a bonus star each turn. So we'll get seven stars on the next turn. Take us up to eight. Okay, we'll do that. Could probably build the port here, to be fair. So it's sort of facing out this way. We need one more turn to get the port. We need 10 stars to build a port. We've got eight. We're going to be getting seven. So we can basically go down to three stars this turn. If we wanted to. I'm going to take the fruit. For now. End that turn. And then we should have enough to build the port. So, port produces two population for low Luka. Units to move here will turn into boats that can move on water. Port creates trade routes through ocean and water to any other port within five tile radius. Fine. So, the Luka has leveled up. I wonder if we did an explorer, whether they'd get on a boat. Should we try that? Kind of. Yeah, cool. Okay. So there's a, another weird little island here. So we could build a port there and have a little trade. That, that'd be quite cool. Uh, okay, so we need... Uh, da, 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 we need someone over here. That wasn't particularly well planned either. Probably be... Can we move our horsey person? Let's move our horsey person. Then next turn we'll turn her into a boat and get them sailing. So there we go, so now they're a boat, and then they probably can't move till next turn. Just looking at the bottom left here, we can upgrade that boat to a ship for five stars. Let's do that. Uh, that's fine, we've got nothing else we can do here. With the stars we've got left, I'm actually going to produce another warrior and then I reckon we'll be able to load them onto the ship I suspect I thought it said we could load someone on there what can we do with the boat oh well let's just move we can move to this other little village and we'll capture that next turn and we'll move this warrior and turn him into a ship and he can go sailing next turn, maybe in a different direction. So we're already halfway through the game. We've already done 15 turns there. And you can see it goes pretty quickly. We'll head off in that direction in the boat. We will capture this little village and expand our area. The village is called Pailu. We can rename it or anything. Doesn't appear so. 
I think we'll keep pumping out warriors. I mean, you can see here now the stars we've got. 18 stars, you know, we're getting loads of stars. We really should be on the tech tree. So we can go hunting or whaling. Farming would be good. Negotiations, we're in ships. So we can um, build battleships. We can... Oh, that's an achievement there. We can explore every single tile. We'll get the Eye of God. So you get these little uh, crowns. If you see these crowns on tech trees, it basically means they've got a challenge that are attached to it that you can get big prizes for, for doing. And then movement. We can move in the deeper ocean with navigation. So that's cool. And da, 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 da. To be honest, I quite like the idea of farming. So we unlock that, and we can see here we've got opportunity to turn land into farms. That's going to cost us five stars, but we can do that next turn. See, we've gone down to second now on the leaderboard. Fallen way behind. I expected we would do because we just got so hamstrung getting stuck on the stuck on the little island. Uh, right, we'll turn that land into farmland. And it'll massively increase our city. Now we can add a city wall to it, or we can get resources. Grab the resources. So we should now start really picking up, as we're getting lots of stars, we should be able to start picking up lots of stuff from the tech tree. Build another ship. We could probably build a port. Where should we build the port? Let's build it over here. Also levels up our village. So now we're getting getting somewhere now. Let's go exploring again. Oh no, not that direction. What a waste. He <laughs> should have gone this way. That's fine. Um, we're getting him back going now. And then we can produce a unit at Pilo. Leave that boat there. But there you go. We could probably carry on this this turn, but I think hopefully you get the, the gist of it. We're sort of expanding out into this here. We've got an AI opponent somewhere over here. When you do come across the AI opponent, if you haven't got sort of um, negotiation or peace treaties, then you probably have to fight them. Um, you can attack their cities and attack their units, try and get domination that way. Um, but yeah, hopefully that's that's enough gameplay. We're just going to go back and have a quick look at some of the uh, options in the game. So there is uh, some options here. There is a multiplayer mode, but it is only local pass and play. But you can play on your network. Um, you can set the game up here with different types of options. We've got different maps here. There's the dry land, lakes, continents are Pelagio, I can never say that word, water world, and then you can change the size of the map as well. You can see the different sizes there. I think we were on tiny, I think, on the map we were playing on. 121 tiles, but it goes all the way up. Massive is 900 tiles, so much bigger. Uh, and then on the new game, Perfection is what we were playing. That's sort of the basic game. Um, we've got the classic 30 turn game there. And you can save your score on the high score table. Domination, you play to eliminate all the other tribes on the map. And then creative mode, um, it's just basically a sandbox mode. So you can just play for as long as you like. Build up your world as much as you like. There's also this boot camp option, which is basically the uh, tutorial, which takes you through the um, steps that you need in the game. I must admit, it is a little bit tricky. It doesn't really clearly show you stuff. So hopefully... A mixture of that tutorial and what I've done here will help out a little bit. But yeah, it's a really cool game. I really like it. Um, it's not going to break the bank either. It's uh, £13.99, $14.99. Um, I think that's a really fair price. It's about the same price as it is on Steam. And it comes from publisher Mijuan. There's also a um, deluxe mode you can buy on the store. I think it's £31. comes with all the DLC with extra tribes and... 
uh, biomes and stuff like that. So definitely worth checking out. But I really like it. Got any questions? Leave them below. We'll uh, get back to you and help you out on that. But hope you enjoyed the video and hope you enjoyed the game if you pick it up. It's a Battle of Polytopia on the Nintendo Switch. Thanks for watching, everyone. And I will catch you again next time. Cheers, guys. Bye.